Dog. I'm Dr. Beckett. Hi, Dr. Beckett. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So I've heard that Misha's having some problems with her eye. Could you explain a little bit more? Yes. I have, she's a Siberian Husky, as you've already seen. Um, I got her about a year ago, so she's still pretty young, but not a puppy anymore. Um, I've noticed recently, I haven't had any problems with her before, but I've noticed recently that she's been scratching and pawing and kind of rubbing up against furniture for her eye, Mm -hmm. and I've noticed some discharge. Um, it's just kind of clear, it's not anything too weird, I thought, but I still wanted to come bring her to you to make sure that everything's okay. Have you noticed anything in her eye? Um, last time that I looked at it, it seemed to have some gray splotches, so that was pretty weird. Um, it was a little bit cloudy, it seems, so... Were the gray splotches in a certain place in her eye? Um, it seemed to be around kind of the middle and maybe off to the side a little bit. Okay. Um, but definitely not all over. It seemed to be kind of centered and all collected in one area. All right. Have you noticed her eye twitching at all? I have. Um, it's not too, too bad, but occasionally I'll notice it kind of twitch when she looks up at me. So I don't know what that means but it's still kind of off. Has her blinking changed at all? Is it more frequent, less frequent? I've noticed with the discharge that she does blink more rapidly and frequently. Um, It seems that she's trying to get something out of her eye, and I assume that's why she keeps clawing at it and rubbing at it. So I don't know what it is. Okay. And is she still moving around the house okay? Is she bumping into things at all? She's, when she was a puppy, she did, but not anymore. She seems to know the house well, and she's not walking weird or anything. Her behavior hasn't changed at all. She still has the same amount of energy. She's not bumping into anything, so no, she seems to have no lack of vision impairment or seeing anything different. Okay, so basically... Um, it's really good to know that she's not impaired in that sort of way, mm-hmm. but it is bothering her of some sort. So what I'm going to do is do a fluorescent stain test to see if there's any abrasions or bumps or to check on the cloudiness to make sure it's not anything terribly bad. So okay. we're just going to take her in the back and it'll take a few minutes. We're going to stain her eye and look at it under a black light to see if there's anything going on. Okay, that sounds good. Do you have any questions? What is the stain test? The stain test is... Mainly, like I said, to um, see if there's any bumps or ulcers, which is very prevalent in younger dogs. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a fluorescent green staining gel and um, insert it into her eye. We're going to have to hold her eye closed for a little bit. Right. And um, so it can, like, kind of move around. The gel can move around in her Mm -hmm. eye and go to all the infected areas. Mm -hmm. And the gel will stick to a foreign body, like an ulcer, and then uh, when we look under under a black light, it will show us the ulcer, and then we can then do further treatment from there. Is it going to hurt her at all? No, I don't think it should. Um, she might be a little bit wiggly because she's a puppy. Oh, I will. <laughs> okay, well, that sounds good. Okay. Well, I'll be your guest. Okay, thank you. A stain test is administered by depositing a drop of the fluorescent green gel into the animal's eye. They have to hold their eyes closed for a minute or so until the fluorescent can move around in the eye and attach to foreign bodies. Then their eye is examined under a black light so the fluorescence can be seen. This picture shows Misha's eye after the stain test was administered on her. The green splotch in the middle of her eye is the fluorescence attaching to the foreign body. The foreign body in this case is an ulcer, which can be caused by corneal dystrophy, The ulcers are formed as a result of the basement membrane failing to bind to the epithelial cornea in the eye. This makes the basement membrane susceptible to superficial erosions and takes a longer time to heal. Because it takes a long time for this to heal, it creates an area for ulcers to form. Therefore, these ulcers are normally the first sign of epithelial corneal dystrophy. Depicted here is the corneal membranes. The epithelial membrane is the outermost layer of the cornea. 
The middle layer is the stroma membrane. The innermost layer is the endothelial membrane. There are many different types of corneal dystrophy. The three major types of corneal dystrophy are epithelial, stromal, and endothelial. Epithelial corneal dystrophy is shown on this slide, and it affects the epithelial membrane of the cornea. The dog will have a buildup of lipids that will appear like gray, cloudy spots on the cornea. As the disease progresses, the eye will start to have a corneal spasms. The stromal corneal dystrophy also has a gray, cloudy appearance, but the eye will not have any spasms like the epithelial on the previous slide. It also causes no discomfort and does not interfere with vision. Endothelial corneal dystrophy will appear cloudy, but will have redness and swelling of the eye, unlike the other two. In advanced conditions, fluid blisters will form and vision will be impaired. Most of the times, this disease can go untreated until the dog seems to experience discomfort. Then it needs to be treated. Siberian Huskies are more susceptible to this disease because it is genetic. In Siberian Huskies specifically, it is an autosomal recessive disease. Since it is hereditary, it is easier to prevent this disease by annual testing of the dogs chosen for breeding. The age of most of these dogs are young adults and should be tested by a veterinarian ophthalmologist after one year of age. So we have the results back from her fluorescent test, and she does have epithelial corneal dystrophy. Um, it is, I was able to rule out the other two types of dystrophies because her eye is twitching, she still has the ability to see, and she also has an ulcer in her eye. Yeah, her ulcer is pretty bad, um, but we're able to treat it with antibiotics, and um, so she'll be put on the antibiotic basically for the rest of her life to help mm -hmm. degrade the ulcer. And um, these types, epithelial coronal dystrophy normally happens in uh, young females and and in specific breeds like Siberian Huskies, so she is more susceptible <laughs> to the disease. And it also is hereditary, so she might have gotten it um, from either both of her parents or one or the other. Okay. Um, so basically, we're going to start you on the antibiotics, and um, we just want you to keep an eye on her, getting around the house. If you notice any changes, anything worsening, please let us know. Okay, that sounds great. I'm so sorry that this happened to her. But yeah, it's just something that wasn't avoidable. Well, thank you so much for doing all this, and I'll definitely keep an eye on her. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>